Okay, I'm excited as you are for DaVinci Resolve 20. I feel like there's a ton of great stuff that they've added that we've just wanted for so long. Like the music feature to remix and retime stuff. Since I've left Premiere, that's like one of the things that I've missed the most. And there's a ton of other stuff, but today I wanna to look at specifically keyframing and see how it's changed from the past versions, run through that quickly and see how it compares to Motion Tween, which if you don't know, is a plugin that I made from the ground up for Resolve, strictly for animating and to make it really, really easy. It doesn't use keyframes or it doesn't rely on keyframes, I should say. So it really stream streamlines like animating anything. And I just just want to see um, now that they've fixed the keyframes how much faster this whole process could be and see if motion tween still stacks up i'm really excited to see what davinci has to offer now in terms of keyframing so let's dive into the project that i'm working on right now okay so i'm in resolve 20 now and i have a little graphic open you might be wondering what the f is going on right now um it's just me Th this video will make it out eventually i hope but i'm basically reviewing this uh, lens right here and just trying to explain uh, the image circle. So this this lens on screen is two thirds, and I'm trying to adapt to full frame. So red two thirds is that lens, and then blue is full frame. So for this graphic, I basically want to bring in this green, and I want it to grow from the red to the blue to show kind of what a lens adapter uh, with glass could do. It will expand the image. It doesn't really matter for our purposes if you understand that right now. The audio in this is going to be the driving factor of how I'm going to animate because the words that I'm saying actually are like the cues for it to animate. So let's listen back first. I'm shooting full frame. We need to go from like a two thirds image circle times two times three and then we can cover full frame. Nope. Okay, so basically every time I say like times two, times three, that's when it's gonna grow and then grow again to show the viewer like that's what the adapter uh, is doing. Okay, so I set up a few markers here just to visually know when to hit each keyframe. And so basically what I'm gonna do is go through and as soon as this graphic pops on, we're just animating the green for reference. As soon as it comes on, we should be here matching the two thirds. So two, five, cool image circle times two so i say times two so we're just going to basically double that maybe we'll go to 0.5 and here i want it to actually double or go to the 0.5 wait for a second and then when i say times three then expand again so i'm going to add another keyframe at 0.5 before we go so before we go here i'm going to hit another keyframe times three and and then actually I'll move this marker way over here because that's when I'll finally go to one. So roughly it should look like this. Here, I'll make this a bit bigger. Two thirds image circle times two times three. And then I actually don't mind the timing of that first one. I think it, it like helps draw the viewer's eye in to realize something's happening. So we actually don't have anything in Resolve 20 down here that you can click on the timeline anymore, which is interesting. So you have to come up here, hit keyframes, and now we can see all our lovely keyframes. Cool, great, we love that. I could have done uh, the keyframing in this panel, although I'm just used to it in the inspector, so I guess uh, there's two ways to do it now. But what we want is actually in this top left here keyframe curves. We're going to hit that and now we can see exactly what we're doing. I'm so thankful that this is in here. So this is basically our speed graph. Everything is linear right now. And what I'm going to do essentially is just curve everything out. I know it's not the greatest that the edit page is just defaulted to linear, but that's what we're working with. Maybe that'll change in the future. Okay, so I'm going to be kind of specific on where I add things here. So this I just wanted to ease in. So I'm going to add that. I wanted to add ease out here. I wanted to ease in again <laughs> and ease out again. Okay, and so for all of these things, I'm gonna turn on show handles so that we can actually see. And now we can see that we have some nice handles to grab. So you can see everything is smoothing out and this is beautiful. We love this. So let's play that back now. Thirds image circle times two times three. This is where we're running into our first issue here. 
So I guess the timing of where I've added the keyframes is a little bit uh, too quick for the curves that I've made in uh, the keyframe panel over here. And because there's no motion blur, which is something that's very crucial, I guess, just in animation, uh, because we have no motion blur, we can really see the snapping of each uh, keyframe. And it's kind of like a dead giveaway that it just doesn't look that great. I'm not happy with this. Maybe we can finesse it a little bit more, uh, just to be a little bit more subtle with it. Uh, so that it's not like so snappy or maybe we can like space them out a bit so I'm just holding shift and dragging here and trying to give it like a bit more room to ease maybe even I'll back off on the front and back ones as well and there still looks to me like there's visually some easing that's happening let's play this back now thirds image circle times two times three and then we can yeah, cover the second one is great it's like almost too slow for me the first the first one's super good now though two-thirds image circle times two times three and then we can i think it's just handling speed in a, a little bit of a different format from what i'm used to i am like very accustomed to working with the graph editor i've been in after effects for like a number of years and this is always how you would keyframe and and time out things okay while i'm editing this video i feel like maybe i'm coming across like a little bit too harsh on the program but i think like I just don't think it looks good for one, but I think my curiosity is sort of getting to me now and I wanna make the identical curve that I'm making right now inside of Resolve and take that to After Effects because in my mind, like I know that it should look good and I've been doing this for years and years inside After Effects and adjusting curves and it's just not giving me the same results. So I'm kind of just like, am I crazy? Like what's going on? I know that this is Resolve's first time like implementing curves it, at least in the edit page. So I wanna make it identical with an After Effects and then compare the two and see like what the differences it are. Because I don't want this video to like come across as like me just shelling Motion Tween because it's my own product. Although like I really, really believe in it and it's just such a quick and efficient way to get uh, animation and like any motion done. But I'm more so doing this because, like, I'm a full-time editor. I want to know the tools that uh, are most, like, efficient and fast so that I'm not, like, thinking and doing multiple things um, when I'm trying to, like, come up with an idea of, like, how to edit something. I want to be like, okay, here's the task, and I know the most efficient way to get there and not, like, fooling around to be like, oh, they, these keyframes, like, didn't work. I have to go into Fusion now instead of I could just, like right out the gates, do the, the right thing the first time. So that's what I'm trying to get to. But right now I'm gonna scratch that itch of curiosity of like going inside After Effects. And uh, yeah, let's do that right now and compare the two. Okay, I'm inside After Effects and I have all my same assets. I've lined up all the keyframes to what I had inside Resolve. You can see uh, this little picture right here is from Resolve and I've just kind of copied uh, everything from there. I think I may have misspoken earlier if I highlight all my keyframes and hop into the into the graph editor. This is what I'm used to. This is the speed graph. This is what most people animate on. What I misspoke was, I, I think I called resolves graph here, the speed graph, and it's actually a value graph. So if I pop open my value graph in After Effects, it looks pretty dang similar now to what I did in Resolve. What I'm gonna do now is put on screen basically what they both look like. And I think After Effects looks exactly what I pictured in my mind. It's good to know I'm not crazy and my mind is definitely still thinking in After Effects and maybe it's just a switch that I need to think more in terms of Resolve easing. And uh, yeah, let's try one more time because I think my third attempt in Resolve is a lot better. So let's hop back to it. No shade to, to Resolve. I know it's literally the, the first iteration of this, uh, but I'm assuming it'll just get better and better. I, I'm not actually sure... Um, why it's doing the things that it's doing, even if our curves don't look like they're that crazy. So I'm gonna try one more time and make them not <laughs> as uh, drastic here. Two thirds image circle times two times three, and then we can cover. So like that was better. It's just not how I want it to look. And because of this now in my brain, I'm like, is what I want actually possible? Uh, for the speed that I want the animation to happen at. And 
because I'm doubting that, um, I don't love that, first of all, because I shouldn't have to be thinking of those things in editing. I know that's a crazy thing to say, but um, I'm going to switch to my tool uh, that I created called Motion Tween. So I'm going to reset everything here. And all I'm going to do is bring in Motion Tween. It's an effect. Um, and I'm just going to drag and drop it on. So initially, if you are new to Motion Tween, it's basically meant to be like a no fuss uh, animation tool and you don't need to use keyframes if you don't want to. You can definitely use them if you want, but it's meant to basically just be like a quick cut and go, essentially. So the first thing we're going to do is um, set our start position. So nothing's happening right now, you can see. So our yellow zero is our uh, start position here. So I can just drag down the scale, and I want it to be about there. Because we referenced our next position is not actually full, it's actually 0.5 we wanted. So now that's what's going to happen. Thirds image circle. Okay, so it's actually happening way too quick. So the way this tool works is it basically takes the very first frame and starts animating from there. You can get around this by changing the static time offset in this window. For our purposes here, I'm not going to use that, and I'm just going to go right to where I want the animation to start. And I'm just going to cut the clip, and that will mark it as zero, so the animation will just start there. So I'm going to back up, delete that off the clip, and now this is what we're left with. Circle times two. So that looks like it's on time for me for this animation. Now I want it to go to the next step. So I'm going to cut the clip. And essentially what I'm going to do uh, to keep those numbers is I'm going to hit flip positions, which is basically going to flip how these interact. So now that this is one and this is two. So now instead of 0.2, I'm just going to make this one. So now it's going to go from 0.5 over here to one. Circle times two times three, and then we can cover. And it's as simple as that. And the amazing thing in this plugin is that if I wanted to change the easing, it's all right here. And if I want to add motion blur, which in this case, I think we should, let's do that. So now we have motion blur and all our easing looks good to me. And the timing also looks good. So let's play back now. We need to go from like a two thirds image circle times two times three, and then we can cover full frame, no problem. Okay, so that's Motion Tween. It's super simple to use for all things added motion. Um, I do really love that they added the keyframe editor. I welcome it with open arms. But right now, I'm still reaching for Motion Tween, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So if you want to add motion to your edits, yeah, check out Motion Tween. I'll link it below. Uh, and if not, happy editing in the new keyframe editor because that's also great. Uh, learn how to edit those splines. But yeah, see you guys. Happy editing.